What's up guys, Jerome here from the Bonsai Supply and welcome to this week's episode. So in this week's episode, I thought I would take the opportunity to talk to you guys a little bit more about leaf reduction. So I get this asked all the time, Jerome, how do I reduce the leaves of my tree? When is the time to reduce the leaves of my tree? And how do I go about it? And most of the time, to 99%, I say, give it another couple of years. Now, leaf reduction is one of those things that you cannot rush. Leaf reduction takes a very long time, especially to do it safely. Um, it takes a long time, and the easiest way to understand leaf reduction is by looking at these two trees. So, for instance, this windswept right here is at a perfect stage now to start the leaf reduction. The reason why I'm saying that this tree is ready to now start the leaf reduction is because it has a lot of branches and it is very dense. Now, a tree that has not a lot of branches, maybe, you know, right after you collect the tree, it has a trunk and then maybe like one branch here, one branch here, and one branch here. It would not be a good time to start the leaf reduction. Here's why. The top, the canopy, has to match the roots. So, since this is so dense up here already, and it's very twiggy, down here, the roots are also very very dense and of course there's only a uh, feed of roots only the thin roots are inside of this pot and it's very very dense so this is an exact mirror image of this on top so the finer the roots get the finer your branching will get the smaller your leaves will get now when I was talking about that tree that you collected and you just had a couple branches uh, look at leaves the same way as you would as uh, solar panels for reference um, when you only have one tree with a few branches, the, leaf ha the leaves have to be much larger to absorb more of the sun and everything else, right? Now, as your tree gets to this stage or this stage, where you get a lot of branching and a lot of twigging, the leaves can come back smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because they don't need to absorb as much anymore. So, what I do to get such a dense ramification is very simple. I defoliate the tree. So for instance, a ficus like this, I defoliate it like three to maybe four times a year. So I just go in and remove all the leaves. And then what that does is every time you remove the leaves, the tree comes back much more vigorous. So it distributes the vigor throughout the entire tree and the tree comes back so much stronger. When the tree comes back stronger, it also brings back a lot more branches, which means more branches equal more leaves and therefore the leaves can come back smaller because, because they don't need to fill up that much space anymore, right? If you only have one branch, the leaves are larger. If you have multiple branches and it gets denser and denser, the leaves are coming back smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's the process that you cannot rush. And so today I'm going to show you on uh, my sea hibiscus um, how I go about it, you know, because it's not quite there yet. But let's see how we can get it to here. Let's go take a look. All right, so I'm not sure if you've seen the video of this sea hibiscus when I first started it. So this is its very first uh, potting, and I started this uh, training of this tree uh, a little less than a year ago. I think it was in um, November of last year, if I remember correctly. Um, as a matter of fact, here's a little uh, clip to show you what this tree looked like at the very beginning. So here's what I like about sea hibiscus so much. Uh, number one, the leaves are heart shaped. I mean, what's not to love about that? Uh, number two, they're very dramatic. And what I mean by that is that you can take a leaf like this, and this is not even a regular size leaf. The regular size leaf is even larger than this. You can take this leaf and shrink it down to this size and even smaller than this. How cool is that? And that's what I was talking about. Not a lot of uh, branches, you need to have bigger solar panels to power the tree. You have a lot of branches, you need smaller solar panels to power the tree. Now I also love sea hibiscuses because they're so fast growing. I mean this, this tree was probably root bound maybe like four months after it was potted into this pot. They grow extremely fast down on the roots and on the top as well. So as you guys have seen now in this little clip that I showed you, this tree looked nothing like it does now. 
and that's only been you know give or take like eight to ten months and it has a ton of branches so the way I went about it was just to defoliate it a lot but there's also another trick with big leaf uh, trees right now what I do with a sea hibiscus like this or a desert rose that has big leaves or why can't I think of anything else that has big leaves any other tree that has big leaves um, this is what I do so at the beginning of the stage of training after repotting it into a uh, bonsai pot I let the tree grow out right and let it explode until the growth is to about out here then I defoliate which brings me back more branches especially more uh, closer to the inside of the canopy which is what you want to build that nice ramification then I let the tree explode again then I defoliate it again to get more branches right and then more branches and then once I was at this stage where I didn't want to have too many more branches just yet I just wanted to have the tree you know be healthy and fill out with more leaves here's what I did I go through these big leaf trees maybe every couple of days maybe every four to five days and I just cut out all of the big leaves and here is why because trees with big leaves like this can be challenging because if you get a nice ramification or a nice canopy like this the bigger leaves they start to shade out all the leaves and all the branches on the inside which causes the uh, smaller branches and leaves on the inside to uh, become weaker and then eventually die off so I just go through this tree and I just cut out all of the big leaves and you know you can do this uh, every couple of days so I just go through the entire canopy and just remove all the big leaves now what that also does it also brings back smaller leaves right because when you cut this one out a big leaf like that it brings back two smaller shoots which then will have to compensate for the larger leaf now today I'm going to defoliate the entire tree and the reason why is because it's gotten so dense on the inside and I have so many branches I need to do branch correction now so I need to remove the branches that I don't want so that I can let then continue the training and that I don't uh, waste too much energy in the wrong branches see how many more branches I have now so this tree is living proof that defoliation really works and it's very easy to work with a sea hibiscus and that you see what you can accomplish with a sea hibiscus under a year that's pretty impressive to me so let's get started on this side and work our way to the other side branches that were going the wrong way so like either inside to the canopy or they were going straight down or straight up well the ones that were going straight up we wired those all the new foliage that came out we wired it and uh, we put it into position to point it in the right direction and then this tree is very notorious for having uh, branches grow out of the uh, armpits so meaning if this was a trunk and this was one branch has a lot of branches that grow right out of the same exact spot and you always want to eliminate those um, that's especially what I do a lot I like to have one branch coming out of the trunk and then it's splitting into multiple branches out here I don't like to have more branches coming out of the same spot because that will thicken up the uh, that exact spot too much and it will become very bulky now as you can see um, 
I haven't really refined the canopy much. I just put all the branches into into the right direction and I gave a movement. Um, some branches like this side is already a little shorter and that's because I want to have this side shorter anyways. This side is much longer and I want to have an uneven canopy. Uneven canopy makes the tree look a lot more natural than again at the end as well. So I'm already focusing on that and I do like the thickness of the branches up here but not quite down here yet. So that's why I left the tips at the end. So up here where the branches are already pretty thick, I removed the tips. Now when you remove the, the, the little bud at the end of the branch, when you defoliate, when you remove it, it sends all the growth back. If you leave it, it will start continue to grow that direction when the first push comes out. So these branches, I want them to thicker up and push more into this direction. But the top, I want to leave it alone. Now this branch up here is just my sacrificial branch. My, my top is not going to be taller than this. Uh, I'm going to let this branch continue to grow until this uh, cut has healed over. I need a, a little more, I need a few more branches that grow into this direction because when you look at the tree, this side is already pretty full, but in here I don't have much yet. But that's okay. I can focus on the bottom right now and then focus on the top a little later. Um, the top has to be uh, the most twiggiest anyway, like thin. The branches, you don't want them to be thick on top. So that's why I'm just going to work my way up like that and I'm going to take my time. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And uh, in next week's episode, I'm going to answer some of your questions. So we're going to do the uh, weekly and monthly Q&A. So please uh, submit some more questions. We already have a lot of great questions already, but we need some more. So submit some more questions and I will answer those in next week's video. So I'll catch you guys next time.